Glory to the Lamb, Jesus, the Christ. Well, last week in the midweek teach, we looked at um, getting old or getting saved. You can get old or you can get saved. And um, I said we'd continue on. We'd done the first part last week. We'll do the second part today. Reading in the New Testament, the Gospel of the Lord Jesus according to John, chapter 3, starting in verse 3. Jesus answered and said to him, Most assuredly, I say to you, unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus said to him, How can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter a second time into his mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, most assuredly, I say to you, unless one is born of water and the Spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. That which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the Spirit is spirit. Do not marvel that I said to you, you must be born again. The wind blows where it wishes, and you hear the sound of it but cannot tell where it comes from and where it goes. So is everyone who is born of the Spirit. Nicodemus answered and said to him, How can these things be? Jesus answered and said to him, Are you the teacher of Israel? And do not know these things. Most assuredly I say to you, we speak what we know, testify what we have seen, and you do not receive our witness. If I have told you earthly things and you do not believe, how would you believe if I tell you heavenly things? No one has ascended to heaven but he who came down from heaven, that is, the Son of Man, who is in heaven. And as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the Son of Man be lifted up. That whoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. He who believes in him is not condemned, but he who does not believe is condemned already because he has not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. And this is the condemnation that the light has come into the world and men love darkness rather than light because the deeds were evil. For whoever practiced, for everyone practicing evil hates the light and does not come to the light lest his deeds should be exposed. But he who does the truth comes to the light that his deeds may be clearly seen, that they have been done in God. And in John 3 verse 20, it says, For everyone who practices evil hates the light and does not come to the light, lest his deeds should be exposed. And people wonder why they, they don't get people at their church. Well, everyone practicing evil hates the light. 
and does not come to the church that has the light, lest their deeds be exposed. That's a reality, isn't it? That many don't want to hear and don't want to face. You get a church on fire for the Lord and a church that tells it exactly the way it is and you're not going to pack the place. I can tell you now. There'll be no such thing as packing the, the local church in the last days. You'll be emptying the la church, local church in the last days. But getting back to... Uh, our title, you can get old or you can get saved. And uh, it's our choice, isn't it? We can grow old disgracefully or we can get saved and be preserved by the Lord. And that's what being in Christ and being in the Word and being in the Spirit and walking by faith does, preserves us, keeps us. Unlike the world who perish, hey? unlike the The world who are falling apart. So our second part will be you can get old or you can get saved too. Too. Now, last week we started deconstructing the word saved. And we concluded that the S was in save was for spiritual. It's one thing that happens when we get saved, we get spiritual. We don't get physical like Olivia Newton John. We get spiritual. Spiritual. I wanna get spiritual. Let me hear the father talk. Father talk. Let me hear the father talk. I want to get spiritual, spiritual, get spiritual. Let me hear the Father talk, Father talk. Let me hear the Father talk. Get spiritual, spiritual. I want to get spiritual. We get spiritual. Let me hear the Father talk. And when we do get spiritual, we lock into the Word and we lock into the Spirit. We're born of the Word. We're born of the Spirit. This time round, we're not born of a woman full of few days in trouble. We're born of the Spirit. So we're going to look at the A, S-A-V-E-D, the A. The A is for advantage. When you become, when you get saved, you get uh, to be with the advantaged people. You're no longer with the disadvantaged people. The world has done, have done themselves a disfavour. They've dis disadvantaged themselves by their choice and their choices. Now, if we go to Psalm 23, 
we got to see here in Psalm 23. We're going to see Excuse me, as we start in Psalm 23, verse 1. <coughs> oh, dear. It says, The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. Well, we're off to a good start. Straight away advantaged. Straight away advantaged. When we're saved, we have no want. The Lord is my shepherd. You've made Jesus your Lord. He becomes your shepherd. That's what saved is. Jesus as Lord. If Jesus ain't Lord, you're not saved. King David made it clear. If he's going to be shepherd, he's got to be Lord. Lord and shepherd go together. He will not be one of them. He has to be two of them. If we're going to be saved. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. It takes a lot of ground, that one verse. Lord, shepherd, uh, and provision, provider, guide, protector um, and carer one who loves you but the shepherd loves the sheep the shepherd lays down his life for the sheep Jesus done that for us laid his life down we don't have shepherds today that love the sheep in the world we have shepherds in churches today that love money they love fame their aim is to grow churches that wasn't the aim of the apostolic men of the book of Acts. You don't hear about talking about growing churches. Eh? You just don't hear it. They were getting on, you know, with what they had to do for Father. They were taking care of business every day. Taking care of business, it's okay. Taking care of business, it's all right. Uh, taking care of business and working overtime, let's go. They were taking care of business, father's business. They weren't counting heads. Paul wasn't uh, the great man he was. He, he, he wasn't um, growing churches. They were leaving. Like, how about the whole of Asia left him? The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me to lie down in the green paddocks. 
flourishing, flourishing, tender grass, right? He leads me beside the still water, beside the waters of rest. Still waters, not muddy waters, still waters. <laughs> this is advantaged, isn't it? We're greatly advantaged when we get saved. We can just grow old disgracefully by ourselves in our little um, red rented boat rowboat. Not much better than no boat. And we just do our own thing and just grow old. I see these people all the time. I see them walking down the road to the shop. The, the Holy Ghost quickens me and says, Look, look, look here, look there, look, look, look. The Lord is speaking to me all the time, daily. And you see them just shuffling down the shop, you know. They, they're over. They're finished. They don't know the Lord. They look like death warmed up. Their face looks miserable, depressed, worried, troubled, fearful. They're barely able to move. There's no life in them whatsoever. And I see it daily. And worse than that, I offer them the word of God and they tell you to go away. Or they just nod and just give you the no. It's heartbreaking. They're just getting old. They're not getting saved. They're not saved, they're not getting saved, and they won't be saved to the uttermost. It's simple as that. Our message today, you can get old or you can get saved. Two. Psalm 23, three. He restores my soul. He leads me in the paths of righteousness. For his name's sake. See, it's all to glorify Jesus, we know that. And he's restoring the mind, the will and the emotions. And he leads you in the right way, in on the right road. Everyone wants the right way. Everyone wants to be on the right road. Oh, am I heading in the right direction? For his loving and affection. Am I heading? In the right direction For his love and affection He's gonna lead me To the gates Made of pearl For his sake Oh Thank you Jesus I know I'm heading in the right direction for his love and affection. Always receive his love and affection. Because I'm one of the advantaged. I've chosen to get saved to the uttermost. Hey. Restore, restoration. We're all resto jobs, aren't we? <laughs> hey? We're all restos. Redeeming restos. Restoring the mind, will and the emotion and, and bringing it back. Maybe leaving a bit of patina there, but mainly... You know, a full 
work over from, from the bottom of the tyres to the top of the roof. Complete paint job and triple coat clear. All new upholstery and sign. Right? New carpet. Complete resto. He restores my soul. He turns me into a convertible. He converts me from flesh to spirit. Right? And I become a 57 convertible. <laughs> That's when I was born, 57. 57 convertible. I'm a Pablo 57 convertible. On display for his name's sake. Huh? Psalm 23. Verse 4, yea, it's, it's a yes. Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. Now we walk through the world. Yes, as we walk through the world, that's the valley of the shadow of death. I mentioned that before, the old geezer shuffling down the road, doing the Harlem shuffle. He'd just slide to the left like a monkey, slide to the right. How low can you go? To win the Harlem Shuffle. Right? Walking through the valley of the shadow of death. That's all you see, isn't it? When you walk through the world. Death on faces. Misery. Sadness. Regret. Hate. Resentment, fear, doubt. Have a good look. Take the time today when you go downtown. As you go downtown, make sure you have a boat peep. And you check them out. You don't have to gawk at them. You just have a quick look in the face. And you'll see the shadow of death. Huh? Some of the folks might even have a five o'clock shadow. They haven't had a shave. <laughs> you have to shave in the morning. By the time it's five o'clock, you've got a shadow. But you have a look at them. They're not happy campers, I can tell you now. Why? Because they're just getting old. They're not getting saved. Huh? They're not new creatures. They're the same old, same old. When you're a new creature, you're a new creature. With an N-E-W, brand spanking. Nothing like new. You make me feel brand new. You do. I tell you, you. You make me feel brand new. I feel brand new. Plastic still on the doors. Manual of Emmanuel in the glove box. When in doubt, read the instruction. I feel new. Because I'm being saved. I'm getting saved. I'm not just getting old. I'm getting saved. It feels like as I'm getting saved and heading towards salvation to the uttermost, it feels like I'm getting younger. 
<laughs> I don't believe you, they'd say. They'd say, oh no, it can't be, it's impossible. The carnal man and woman don't know the things of the spirit. They don't understand. Eh? They don't understand that we're the advantaged people and we can go through, walk through the world and not fear evil. Because Jesus is with us. Yea, though I walk through the world, through the valley of the shadow of death, I fear no evil. For you, you're with me. Huh? Jesus is with me. Look, he said in Matthew twenty eight twenty, Lo, I'm with thee always. Or, I've lowered myself to be with you always. That's how humble Jesus is. He's lowered himself. Huh? Would you lower yourself for the saving of someone's soul? Lower yourself. Oh, he's on the street. Oh, what's he doing there? How shameful. Gee, it, look at him, he looks like a fool. He's on the street, oh, how pathetic. How pathetic is that bloke? He's on the street, oh, shame. You wouldn't listen to him, would you? He's not Reverend Dr. Father and Mother of the Ontario Interact. He just passes by with the Basilica of the title of the um, Pontifical uh, Basilica of the Bible Dean in the um, religious realm. Oh, he's just on the street. Let me ask you a question, all listeners. Tell me the last time you seen a Roman Catholic priest on the street preaching the gospel. <laughs> hey? Can you tell me the last time you seen a Roman Catholic priest or a bishop? Hey? Like Bishop Jesus. Did you know Jesus was a bishop? Yeah. He's an overseer of all sheep. But you tell me, hey, the last time you seen a Roman Catholic priest on the street preaching the gospel, going into all the world preaching the gospel, nah. I've never seen one, not one, not one Roman Catholic priest on the street preaching, or a Roman Catholic chaplain on the street preaching or a nun on the street distributing the word of God reaching out oh dear that that looks too foolish that you know people may not respect you anymore if they see you on the street oh who is this chubby Oh dear. I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. I, when I walk through the world, I'll feel no evil, for Jesus is with me. And his rod, his word, and his staff, your rod and staff, make me feel very comfortable in awkward situations. Because we know it's so awkward out there <laughs> and you're proclaiming the spirit. Hey? You're proclaiming in the spirit in a, in a carnal world and you're speaking the truth in a world of lies and liars. And you're shining the light in the darkness. It can get awkward. So here he is comforting us with the word and 
the Holy Ghost, the staff, the wooer. Right? The wooer. What do you think of that? Glory to the Lamb. Advantage, we're advantaged, we're advantaged. Because we're getting saved. We're not just getting old disgracefully and without grace. Huh? Psalm 23, verse 5. You prepare a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. You're not my head with oil, my cup runs over. There you go. There's the advantage again, isn't it? We're going in hard here. It all comes under the saved heading. Getting saved. Why wouldn't you want to get saved? And the enemy comes along and the Lord starts bringing out the fine linen and shaking it down. Oh, can you excuse me for a minute? I'm just... Gonna tuck that under the table there, and then you'll be right. You, you'll be able to talk with Paul in a minute. You can abuse him once I get the tablecloth on the white linen tablecloth. You can start abusing him then, please. So just excuse me for a minute. As Jesus prepares the table before me in the presence of mine enemies. And then he puts a rose of Sharon on the table to remind us. <laughs> hey. And on one corner of the table and on the other corner, he puts a lily of the valley to remind us, decorates the table. Then he says to the enemy, you can sit down now and start your abusing. Uh, start abusing my servant and brother. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemy. You anoint my head with mud. No, with oil. <laughs> See that? I mean, what can penetrate an anointed head? <laughs> huh? You anoint my head with oil. What can penetrate an anointed head? I tell you, we're heads above the rest. We're advantaged. Eh? We're, we're ahead. We're getting ahead and we are ahead. It's sort of like The day Delaney's donkey won the half mile race, he got in by a head. Or was it a nose? No. Who knows? I know. <laughs> Who knows? Um, you anoint my head with oil. So you're out there sitting at a table. This is in the middle of the street, on the street corner, preaching. And that's all I see is a, a table, fresh linen and flowers. And I see my enemies come along and sit there and start abusing me. Okay? And I'm just sitting there. they got no anointing on them. They're only anointed by the devil to abuse. But I'm, I'm anointed. See? And my cup's running over. That's making them even more angry. Because they got nothing in their glass, in their cup. But my cup's running over. Because the Lord just keeps replenishing it. <laughs> hey? Hey, look, it's best to get saved, isn't it? Than just to get old and die with the devil. End up in the devil's house forever. In the abbas? Huh? 
the demonic basilica. Psalm 23, 6. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. When the Lord is your shepherd, that's what happens. And, uh, that's the advantage we have. Goodness and mercy following us everywhere we go. We can't get rid of them. The angel of goodness and mercy. Right? We can't have be blessed. Gee, who wants to die? Who wants to to um, get old and die and go to hell? I don't. I'd rather be with the the saved, the spiritual, not the natural. Not the natural. The advantage, Psalm 23. And then, of course, look on the flip side there, and we got the disadvantage, which is Psalm 1. Huh? Psalm 1. Starting in verse 4. The ungodly are not so, but are like the chaff, which the wind drives away. Right? Therefore the ungodly shall not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. For the Lord knows the way of the righteous, the way the ungodly shall perish. See? What do you think of that? The ungodly are not so. Those who, who aren't getting saved are not so. The Lord isn't their shepherd. Hey? Eh? The word here in Psalm 1 verse 4 says that they're like chaff. The wind drives them away. See how the people of the world, they're driven. They're driven. You ever heard that old saying, old school saying, oh, They're driving me to drink, or they're driving me into the ground, or they're driving me crazy. Huh? They drive me crazy. It, it's all driven, isn't it? No leading, it's a driven, <laughs> pounded, hey, driven, that's the devil. Hey? The ungodly are not so. They're like the chaff, it's the wind drives away. Therefore the ungodly shall not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. There it is again. Sinners can't attend a church that's in right standing with God. You won't find sinners there. Simple as that. So if, if this... Uh, if the cliche of, of the heretics is true, why does it say here sinners uh, cannot stand in the congregation of the righteous? 
So we've got sinners and righteous here. But they say these once saved, always saved. Uh, Go fund me, um, uh, Baptist, right? They say that uh, we're all sinners. Well, you can't be in a congregation of righteous people. You won't be able to cope. <laughs> hey? The Baptists won't cope in a congregation of righteous people. They won't cope for what's being said. Hey? Think, oh no, they're talking about that Jesus again, banging on about Jesus. Let's get out of here. Full steam ahead to the Krispy Kreme shop. Oh, what? No, Easter egg hunt? Oh, I'm out of here. What will the children think? Oh, dear. I crack up and never get any peace. Eh? That's that's the way it is. They're not getting saved. Eh? The ungodly shall not stand in the judgment, nor sinners. They can't stand in the congregation. They just, well, they can't stand the congregation of the righteous, to be honest. They just can't stand them. To what degree? would that be? Well, they don't attend. <laughs> that's how much they can't stand them. And that's how much they can't stand in the congregation of the righteous. Because they're sinners. So, it just blows that out the door, doesn't it? Oh, we're all sinners. You want it for all sinners? Who the hell are the righteous? <laughs> the world. <laughs> oh, we're all sinners, you know. I'm a sinner, saved by grace. Well, look, there has to be a change somewhere. If you're a sinner saved by grace and you're still the same, old, same old, you're mocking God. You're saying that Jesus is banging on about... Um, Sin having no dominion over you, and Jesus is banging on about um, new creatures, and Jesus is banging on that he come to set the captive free, not half free or three quarters free, and Jesus is banging on uh, saying that um, before, uh, when you were just getting old, uh, your wages and your actions uh, led to hell. Right? As it says in Romans 6, verse 20, for when you were slaves of sin, you were free in regard to righteousness. See that? What fruit did you have then in the things of which you are now ashamed? For the end of those things is death. But now having been set free from sin and having become slaves of God, you have your fruit to holiness and the end for you will be everlasting life. You see that? For the wages of sin is death and the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus. Our Lord. Eh? Now, where else can it be found except in Jesus? Eh? There's no other way to be happy in Jesus but to trust and obey. Trust and obey, because there's no other way. To be happy in Jesus and to trust and obey.
See, the world, they're just getting old. People of the world are getting old, the world is getting old. It's decaying, it's falling apart. They're talking about climate change and um, everything's changing in, in the weather and everything's changing. Global warming. No, this is a global warning. And I've said that for decades. It's global warning. Everything's getting old. All oh, my friends are getting married. Yes, they're all growing old. They're all staying home on the weekend. They're all doing what they're told. When I walked into a bar the other night and saw an old familiar face, he said, how are you going, show my boy? Tell me, are you playing the same old game? Everything's growing old, isn't it? Everything's getting old. But the good thing is, God's given us opportunity to get saved. Ha <laughs> I get saved. People are so troubled about getting old. But the ungodly shall not stand in the judgment. They'll collapse. They won't be able to cope. Nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. See? Now, the Lord wouldn't call them the congregation of the righteous if they were unrighteous and not in right standing with Father. And 1 John 1, 9 says, If you sin, that he will cleanse you with his blood. Jesus, he will cleanse you. You won't be covering yourself in the blood. He'll cleanse you. Right? He'll cleanse you from all unrighteousness. That means you'll be in right standing. Because you've been cleansed. Okay? 1 John 1, 9. If we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. So when you're in sin, you're, you're not righteous in his sight. How can that be so? See? He's faithful. And just to forgive us. We confess our sins. And he cleanses us. And, and when he forgives us and cleanses us, he delivers us and empowers us. See? So how can the sinner stand in the congregation of the righteous? They can't. It's chalk and cheese. You just feel so awkward. You, you just don't feel right. Because the world is all about feeling and sinners gravitate to feeling. Nothing more than feeling. They gravitate that way. I'm not feeling well. Well, no one said you're not well. You just said you're not feeling well. I feel... I feel I'm in love, you know. I feel like letting go. Da -da 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 I feel this and I feel that, but faith isn't feel. Hey, okay? and love is not feel. Love, love is not a feeling. It's an act of your will. <laughs> hey. It's not a feeling. Jesus uh, 
didn't go by feelings. He went by the leading of the spirit. It's two different um, directions there, isn't it? The world go by feelings. I felt this and I felt that. But we get more solid reliable uh, reception in the Christ and understanding and our lives are more concrete aren't they they're, they're more established because we're getting saved we're not just getting old and feeble and troubled and worried and sickly looking we're the advantage, not the disadvantaged peoples. That's for sure. Hey? Well, because of this new birth. It's not. A, it's not a birth. It's a new birth. We we've already been born, and we've tasted that one. They're distinctly different. Born of mum and then born of Messiah. Hey? Two different, totally two different lives. Lives. And I know which one I want and the one I'm sticking with. It is born of Messiah. So they can't stand. So when you at church next time and you, and you don't see many people, you just know, oh, the sinners. Oh, I forgot, the sinners can't come here. See, they can't cope. But the sinners can can come to to repent. And, and they'll be able to cope because they're coming to turn it over and turn things around and change. And that's what the Lord wants. So the Lord permits them to stand. At least for time enough to repent. <laughs> and then they're good. They're good to go then. Because they've been born afresh. Born new. Born free. As free as the wind blows. As free as the grass grows, born free to follow the Lord. Live free where no sin can hold you. I am. Where sinners abound you, abusing and mocking your life. Live free with Father beside you, as free as the morning light. And then you're heading home, born free, born of Messiah, born of the Master, born of the Word, born of the water of the Word, born of the water of the Word and the Spirit. Now yeah, there's a lot of difference, isn't there? Eh? You're not going to get old and, and, and weak and dismayed when you're born of Messiah. You're born of the Christ. Eh? Born of the Spirit. 
then Psalm Psalm one six, for the Lord knows the way of the righteous, but the way of the ungodly shall perish. See, they're to get old people, but we're to get saved people. So, um, we'll have everlasting life. We won't perish because we believe. See, what I've said here this morning is very clearly. I believe. I believe. I believe. I believe that Jesus died on the cross for me. How about you? I believe that sinners won't be saved unless they repent. Every time a newborn baby cries, I remember what King David said. He was conceived in sin. I believe. Oh, yes. Yes, yes, yes. I believe. See that? I believe in getting saved to the uttermost. I believe in the sign. I believe in what Jesus says. So I'm not going to perish. The Lord knows the way of the righteous. Hey? Steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. Oh, the steps of a good man on battle, Lord. He should never be held down. Though we fall, though we fall, he should never be held down. Because the Lord upholdeth him with his hand. Oh, yes, with his hand, with his hand. The Lord upholdeth him with his hand, with his hand. The steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. Shall never be held down. You can get sad. <laughs> You can get old. You can sing to the Lord, or you can scream at the Lord. Right? I can't help but just do a David. You know, I'm forever singing to the Lord. He summed up. <laughs> he summed up, didn't he? Look at the psalms. How many psalms did King David write? That's a good little project to find out for you. Go and check it out. Okay. He just couldn't stop singing. Of the Lord. That's how great that's what the how great the Lord is, and that's what he does to you. That's all has happened with me since I came to the Lord, I can't stop singing. Okay. They can't stop the music. Nobody can stop me singing. I love the Lord and I'm proud of him. And I'll sing to him each day. You can choose to die, get old and wind, but I'll be getting saved. <laughs> hey? You can't stop the preacher. Nobody can stop the preacher. He's born of the word and the spirit too. And it's easy to be sure. Well, here we are today. Doing the second part. Now, I'm going to just go up to the top of Psalm 1. Because we're going to see... Um, 
We're going to see the saved again. Okay. I like the Psalm 1 and the initial verses because it gives you the description of, of, of the character of the saved. Psalm 1 verse 1, Blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stands in the path of sinners, nor sits in the seat of the scornful. Well, there you go. See? Blessed, that means heavenly happy, is the man who walks not in the counsel, in the doctrine of ungodly people. That means sinners, wicked people. Heavenly happy. Hey? Heavenly happy. I can't help smiling all over the place, you know. Because I reject the counsel of the world and the counsel of sinners and uh, the uh, path of sinners. Now, once again, how can we be sinners? There's, as the, the Baptists say, and, and many denominations, Pentecostals too, saved by grace, you know, whoever she is, nor stands in the path of sinners. So you, you can't be standing in the path of sinners and you can't be a sinner and be a blessed man. Now, I can continuously come across people who say, oh, I'm a sinner. We're all sinners. And they go to church each Sunday or Saturday. And Israel Fire, he, he made it clear. He, he had it put in big capital letters. Uh, it might have been upper and lower case, but they're big size. I'm a sinner too. Oh, really? I'm a sinner too. So he threw that in so people wouldn't get angry with him. And people don't like that, you know. People don't like um, other people getting angry with them. They get afraid. They're afraid of that. And the devil pounds them. Oh, he, he comes on strong with the fear, you know. Oh, they won't like you. Oh, they, 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 they'll, um, they won't sign you up for football for next year. You better not say that. But, you know, you can compromise and just put on the end, I'm a senator. You know, I'm trying to be the fire and brimstone preacher sort of thing, you know. But at the end, I'll put in, oh, I'm a sinner too. Is that what John the Baptist said? John, John the Baptist said, re, re, repent or burn or perish because the kingdom of uh, heaven, the kingdom of God is at hand. But I'm a sinner too. <laughs> that was a, in brackets, wasn't it? Nah. What about Jesus and his upbraiding the Pharisee and calling them dogs and whitewashed tombs and hypocrites? Did he say, oh, but I'm a sinner too? Did he put that on there? Nah. Come on, please. Look, it, it, it's time to draw the line. Eh? Try, it's just time to Joshua up and say, look, if you're with them, be with them. But if you're with the Lord, be with the Lord. Which one's it going to be? Huh? I know we're all sinners, saved by grace. Look, you ain't going nowhere like that. You're just getting old. You're not getting saved. Huh? Dear, oh dear. Would I lie to you? Would I lie to you, brother? Would I tell you something that wasn't true? <laughs>
Blessed, heavenly happy is the man who walks not in the doctrine of sinners and wicked people and ungodly people. Huh? What doctrine do you have? Now, don't try and tell me that the doctrine of Jesus uh, would lead you into sin. Hey? <coughs> Papa says that uh, your fruit will be unto holiness and in the end eternal life. If you are a slave of God and of the doctrine of the Christ, how can you be a sinner? Psalm 1, what I like about it, it, it distinguishes clearly between sinner and saint. That's the difference. Clean, clear difference, distinguished, very uh, definite, isn't it? Heavenly, happy, blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, the wicked, nor stands in the path of sinners. The, the, the blessed man, the heavenly man, the godly man is nowhere near sin. He's not even in the path that leads to sin. So how can we be sinners saved by grace? <laughs> like I tell you, the more you look at the verses and the words of Jesus, the more you can distinguish who's who in the zoo. And who are these people? I really want to know who are you? Ooh, 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 ooh. I really want to know. Peter Frampton couldn't find out. He didn't know because he never had the Spirit. He never had the Holy Ghost. Who are you? Ooh, 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 ooh. I really want to know. I really want to know. Unless you have the Spirit, you'll never know. Unless we have the Holy Ghost. We'll just be religious. We'll have a form. We'll have a form or maybe a presentation of godliness. But these people deny the power thereof, deny the power of the word that it can set you free on faith and obedience and they deny the power of the Holy Ghost to resurrect you out of the mildew and the mold and the misery and mayhem of sin, darkness. Hey. Heavenly happy is the man who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly that stands in the path of the sinners nor sits in the seat of the scornful. Hey, They sit in the seat of the scornful. Forever mocking, aren't they? We can't sit in those seats as the disciples of the Christ, as the soldiers of the Christ, as the people of God. We can't sit in the seats and share the seeds of the scornful and the mockers. And who are the greatest mockers of all? Well, in the Lord Jesus' day, the Pharisees, religious leaders, they were the mockers. Boy, didn't they mock Jesus. And look, we've still got the Pharisees today. I've seen it um, on Sunday night seeing all the Pharisees and the mockers over there in uh, Rome with the Pope doing his um, egg Sunday service. Hey? All the mockers, they're mocking Jesus. Hey? And they've added it all in, all this Good Friday and Bad Saturday and um, 
एग सांडा है एग मांडा है बट दिस एग ऑन देयर फेस एंड देयर आर बिग डिस्क्राइज ब्लास्फेमिंग द नेम ऑफ जीसस ऑल ओवर द प्लेस दे विल दे विल रॉक यू रॉक यू blaspheming his name all over the place will he the old pope and you see the carry on boy boy i'm thinking to myself is that the way jesus operated nah far from it and the roman catholic religion with business they um forever said the, the popes and cardinals and all the rest of the names they have in their special garments that are needed no more we only have one priest his name is jesus the great high priest is only one intercessor We don't need all these intercessory Jezebel prayer warriors, eh? I'm an intercessory prayer warrior. <laughs> There's one intercessor between Father and man, and that's Jesus. Jesus. And where were the intercessory prayer meets with intercessory prayer? Jezebel warriors in the book of Acts. There's none now. It's all been added in, stitched on, filthy old garments, stitched on to the pristine linen of Jesus. Huh? Old wine put into uh, the uh, mixed. With the new one, huh? Trying to squeeze new wine into old wine skin can't be. It just won't hold. Simple as that. So I had a good look at that on the telly. <laughs> Seeing the old religion in action. Rambling on there with their Latin and Greek and whatever they had, it was so dead and dry and lifeless and hypocritical. It was just pathetic. I don't have any other words for Francis, the talking mule, and and his uh, hypocrisy and heresy. I didn't get catch the joint, but I, the name of it. But I think it was the Basilica, Saint Peter's Basilica. And they say they fashion their church, the Roman Catholic Church, on Peter. But Peter said, "Silver and gold have I none." So you know, huh? They'll just get old and go to hell. That's the bottom line. Or they can get saved, but they're going to have to trash all that stuff. And turn the basilica into a barista or something for the poor. Everyone can come and have their coffee, eh? and they can double up and use the place also. You know, for rent it out. <laughs> But that's all it amounts to, eh? That's all it amounts to. Jesus never had no holy building, <laughs> eh? Jesus was the holy building, <laughs> and the only holy water there is is the Word of God, eh? And if you drink that, I'm telling you now, you're going to be holy. If you do the Word of God, that means drink it, as Ezekiel. Uh, ate the scroll. You drink the word of God. Hey, eh? you take it in and walk in it. You're going to be holy. 
you're going to live a holy life. And you you receive Jesus and you, you'll you have uh, opportunity to become a child of God. You receive his spirit, you'll be holy. Word and spirit, born of word and spirit. See? That's how you're going to be holy. You're not going to be holy because you wear a robe, a special robe, made out of gold thread and a fish hand and uh, swing a swing a pot of incense around and then knock someone's head off hey? passive smoking in the pews hey? there's probably got a bit of Mary J in there and he's, they're swinging it around, everyone's off their face, thinking, oh, it's a beautiful, in that basilica, wasn't it? Wow, what an anointing. No, that was the Mary J. He didn't have incense in there, there was Mary J in there. What do you reckon? Now, that's the truth. I know there'd be people who say, oh, look, he's mocking. He, he's mocking again. Now, I'm not mocking God. I'm just clearly saying God is right. The Pharisees were hypocrites. The Pharisees were whitewashed tombs. They were hard taskmasters. And they held back the people from entering into the spirit of the Christ. And that's what these Roman Catholics do. And they are all the other religious mobs the voodoos and the hoodoos and the, the gurus. They all do it. Because they don't know Jesus, simple as that. <laughs> as Paul said, if you have known him and been taught by him, you'd know this is not his way. It's the way of the cross that leads home. Not some cross with the wheel on it. We've got to go home by the blood sprinkle way. We're going to obey. That the blood sprinkle way is to obey. I need to go home by the blood sprinkled way. The path that the Saviour trod. Yeah, what was that? People would automatically think, oh, the Via Della Rosa. No, it was obedience. Sorry. Wrong again. <clears throat> it was obedience that Jesus said, okay. Father, your will not mine. Had nothing to do with a street. A street can't save you. You can walk up and down the Via Della Rosa until you fall down and collapse, it won't save you. Right? And give all your money to the poor and you're back to be whipped and sit in the streets of Calcutta, it won't save you. You just get old, die and go to hell. We've got to get saved. We've got to get into the spirit. Be those advantaged people. Be, be the, those people who are partaking of Psalm 23. It's not just some uh, song. It's, a, it, it, it's where we live and the way we live. Not the way we were, memories of the Eucharist and Mary. No, we've got to forget all that and move on, moving right along, so we'd be advantaged, not disadvantaged. We didn't know we'd be dis disenfranchised people to just get old and die and go to hell. I, I don't want that. I reach out to so many people daily in the last 35 years, old, young and indifferent, and my heart breaks that they just don't want it. And I know they don't want it because they don't want to know me and they don't want to receive the literature. And I know that's happening because God doesn't see it fit 
for them to take the literature. God doesn't see it fit to have such a blessing because he knows their heart. Their heart is not noble. He knows, as the scripture says, the light shines in the darkness and the, and the darkness could not comprehend. Now, if the light himself, Jesus, was shining in the dark and they didn't want to know about it, how in the world would they want to know me? When I'm talking about the, the light was shining in the darkness, Jesus, the light of the world, the word of God, made manifest. Come on. It's been another wonderful morning, hasn't it? In our midweek teach. Look, we're going to have a third part on this. Hey? Must have been one for the Father, one for the Son, and one for the Holy Ghost. Hey? So we'll do a part three. Do a part three next week. Thank you uh, for lending me your ears. <laughs> Friends, Romans and countrymen, lend me your ears. As long as you give them back, of course. You know what I mean? Um, have a great day. And uh, find as many people as you can, if you are saved, and ask them, uh, do you plan on just getting old or you want to get saved? And see what they say. And if they say, saved from what, mister? <laughs> now listen here, you. I've been going to church since I was a little girl and I used to help in the kitchen at the Roman Catholic uh, Presbytery. Don't tell me. He said, well, what I was asking was, do you want to be saved from sin, self, Satan, the rot, the common hellfire? Because if you do, you're talking to the right man because I know how it can be done. But I can't save you. But the word can save you. His name is Jesus. <laughs> By that time, she'd be well and truly gone. <laughs> God bless everyone. And uh, have a wonderful day. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. <laughs>